Hello everyone, happy first day of summer. I am Jessica. And Q. And that's Q. And we're both with Mother Earth News, and today we're celebrating Pollinator Week. Um, and I think that's our official hashtag for the week as well, hashtag Pollinator Week. And right now, as you can see, we're not in our typical indoor setting, making food or anything like that. We're actually outside right now, and it's a beautiful day out. Um, and so we're in one of the beautiful gardens that are near our office in Kansas. And behind us, you can see we have a really nice setup of these beautiful plants. And so we're out here to talk to you guys about pollinators and pollinator gardens, why it's important and what you can do about it. And that's basically our roadmap for today. We're gonna to be showing you a couple different resources that you can use to learn about pollinators. And so we're first gonna talk about the garden behind us, which is an official pollinator garden. And then after that, we're gonna talk a little bit about why pollinators are important for us, um, the threats to pollinators, and what you can do to help to be pollinator friendly in your area. So so Q, how about you get us started and talk a little bit about the book that we have today. Yeah, so we have Pollinator Friendly Gardening. Um, I've been looking at this book for the last few days and I found a lot of great information. So we have this on our bookstore at Mother Earth News and we'll have a link in the comments for it. Um, just a great book to walk you through the process of pollinator plants and what kind of plant, what kind of plants you need to have in your garden to keep those pollinators around, why it's important. It just kind of covers everything mm -hmm. that there is to know about pollinators. It's been really informative for me. Um, cool. So we're going to talk about what we have here. We have a lot of plants, um, but we're going to first focus on milkweed, um, which we have a lot of on this side. Yeah. So we're going to kind of walk over here. Um, I'm going to pick the short one real quick. So these are great for butterflies. Um, currently there's a lot of beetles. Uh, a lot of the butterflies are not um, out yet. They're still in their caterpillar form. But you can actually look through milkweed and like find the caterpillars on the other side of the actual plant. Um, we did see one earlier. Yeah, we saw one earlier. Um, and one of the cool things about Kansas is that we, and maybe other places too, but we see them everywhere. They're just kind of native, so that's really important that they're native. Um, in the book, it talks about what zones and how they're great um, in certain climate conditions. So these are great for monarch but butterflies specifically, um, and you'll find them. So you can put these in your garden and attract the butterflies in. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can see how tall some of them Yeah, some of them get really tall. I mean, they're, I'm not very tall, but they do get <laughs> taller than I am. Some reference. Yeah. So I'm five foot four, and so and I'm- we're 11. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so the milkweed is still above our heads. So it grows pretty big, um, but we have some in our office gardens as well. And um, you don't necessarily have have to plant a ton of them, yeah. um, even just a small clump of them uh, is really advantageous if you're wanting to attract pollinators. Um, and I believe uh, monarch butterflies, this is like their sole source of yeah. food. Um, so they, they really love milkweed. <laughs> right now we just have a lot of the beetles which also happen to be um, pollinators. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, the ones that are office are not quite this tall, but you'll see some out on the you know, on the fields that are about that tall. Yeah. And, but you can get seeds and, start and plant them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Okay, so let's move forward to, um, this one's one of the colorful ones in the garden. Yeah. These little, um, these little orange flowers. I believe this is butterfly weed. So again, we don't really have many butterflies right now. Um, I think it's just a little bit too early for them, but we have plenty of beetles. You have a beetle. Mm -hmm. um, they really, they really love us. They've been crawling all over the place today. <laughs> yep, so yeah, so we wanna talk about why they're important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you would want to have them. One of the, the main things is basically without pollinators, we wouldn't have the food that we have. Um, they're really a key function to have why we have food and how food is produced. Yeah. Um, what are the things that you find that you, that you thought they were important for? Yeah, absolutely. So it's very easy to learn about pollinators, even if you just want to do a quick search online. Um, the National Wildlife Federation, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they have a lot of great resources. If you just want to do a quick search about why should I care about pollinators, 
leaders. And one of the big things is uh, we are finding some statistics that I think there was some statistics about food that in the U.S. there is over 150 food crops just in the United States that rely on pollinators to you know help them stay around. Um, we also have a couple more statistics here. So 80% of flowering plants rely on pollinators. Q, I believe you found a st oh my goodness, there's a butterfly. That's awesome. I don't know if you caught that. That was exciting. <laughs> yeah, the, the not so fun fact is what I have. Yeah. You have some of the fun facts, I think. <laughs> um, the one that I have is pretty harsh. Um, so basically, the Wildlife Service, uh, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, homeowners use 10 times more chemical pesticides per acre on their lawns than farmers use per acre on their crops. And up until I read that, I really thought, you know, um, the farmers are probably using the most amount. I never really thought how much went into like just a yard, like your yard. Mm -hmm. um, but then reflecting on it, I think we often get uh, really focused on what our lawn looks like and not so much what we're doing for the environment. Mm -hmm. And so that's why a pollinator garden is so great yeah. because you're not only making your yard beautiful in a different way than you might think, but you're also helping the, the just the ecosystem and like all the plants that are growing and the butterflies like it's to a, a bigger level than you might think because um, right. you might think your little garden's not really doing much but if we all did that it would be just so wonderful and impactful for everybody yeah and kind of building off that um, if you're curious as to how do I want to be pollinator friendly like we were saying there a lot of importance goes behind pollinators so because they contribute so much to flowering plants and food if we didn't have pollinators Pollinators. We wouldn't have the food variety we have. We wouldn't have the plant diversity that we have. Um, native species would suffer. Um, and pollinators are not just limited to butterflies. Um, it includes a lot of different insects. Um, it includes animals. It includes water and wind as well. So just some of those natural forces. And so because of things like climate change, the use of chemicals like herbicides and pesticides, human error when we're transporting um, pollinators, sometimes we make mistakes unfortunately um, so a lot of those factors contribute towards the threat of um, pollinators and so there are a lot of different books and resources written on that um, I remember I took an environmental science class and one of the big ones was a, a much older book called Silent Spring but it talks about um, those chemicals uh, that, that we use and that we just go overboard with it mm -hmm. and the, unfortunately the pollinators suffer um, so like he was saying uh, a pollinator garden is a great and accessible way to start start kind of building up that support network for our pollinators. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you can do um, if you're overwhelmed, um, you can look online. There's many websites where even just the the actual website that sells the seeds will help you find plants that are native because mm -hmm. that's really important. You want to avoid um, for your pollinator garden, you want to try to go the native way um, and then some perennials are going to help. There's again, this book has everything that you would want to know on how to get started mm -hmm. um, but you can also do searches um, I just ordered a pound of sunflowers that are native to our area and I typed in my zip code in on the website for the seeds and it told me which ones I needed that were native and would grow the best in our zone and so what we're doing is we're, we're growing a large amount of them to keep the butterflies and keep all of that around us um, just to help that's a way for us to help yeah. so it's as easy as that you can just start off small or you can just order a lot of seeds you can go to your local store and they'll have packets that are specifically for pollinators and it'll say whether it's for butterflies or it's for bees I got two different packages one's for butterflies and one is for bees so there is a difference and this book goes over all of those differences it has charts on which plants are for which beetle and butterfly and a bird and mm -hmm. um, bees so you'll have all of that in here and that's great that's been really helpful yeah one of the things I really like that he was talking talked about before and I'm gonna jog over here quickly yeah. um, so Q you are also uh, studying herbs a lot yes um, and one of the cool things that she had mentioned to me was that you can kind of uh, go like a double duty sort of thing where if you want to find some more uh, function from your pollinator garden there are ways that you can uh, include like herbs in right. your garden that are also attractive to pollinators and I think uh, this should be time correct yeah. um, and I really like what Q's been doing um, and I like learning from hers 
uh, just to even identify it, you can just kind of, you know, rub the leaves and give a sniff and it smells so good. Yeah, that's something I do a lot. So if, if I don't know what it is, I just kind of, you know, take a little bit it's, of it and then smell it. And then you don't necessarily have to pull it off the plant, yeah. just giving it a rub. So um, here they have thyme and they have basil over here yeah, in the back, um, which is also a great one. So not only can you do like flowers and milkweed, but you can also do an herb garden, which is something that I've, I'm doing right now. I have, um, you know, I, I have mint, I have lavender, which is one for pollinators. Um, I have uh, chamomile, which is another one. And then I have, uh, gosh, I'm forgetting all that I have. <laughs> I have lemon balm. I just have like a huge amount of, so I went the herb route mm -hmm. um, because I use the herbs. I am studying to be an aromatherapist. And so that's really important to me. And not only is it helping the pollinators, but it's helping me. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of like a, you know, win-win for everybody. Yeah, that's um, really great. So I've noticed a lot of butterflies in the last week around the, the herb garden. Mm -hmm. And that's one way you can do it. Not, you know, you're getting an awesome fresh herb and you're also helping the pollinators um, in your area and you're impacting pretty much everybody so by doing win. that. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And if you don't have a big space, that's okay too. So Q yes. has a really nice piece of land and she's she's growing things on her farm. Um, I am kind of the opposite where I live in a small apartment and I have a little balcony area. And that's kind of the space that I can work with. And you can use container gardens, like those small gardens. And there's so many different books out there. And I'm sure we have some on our site yes. about like how to work around small space gardens. And you can utilize that very well to create a pollinator garden. Um, so uh, right now I'm in the midst of trying to kind of build up a little balcony garden and so I'm getting little planters and you can even just like arrange it in that small space um, use a couple of little labels see if there's any sort of like garden box you can utilize and put it out it does not take much um, and the pollinators will thank you a lot <laughs> and then another thing Jessica was telling me that I don't think about as much because I have such a large space is community gardens yeah so you can search uh, on Online for a community garden then you can be a part of and then you can start you know planting those kinds of things in the community garden and you'll help not only whatever vegetables you're growing but also the you know the environment um, and then just keeping people aware of all those things that are harmful to pollinators because they're harming everybody not just the pollinators so you you can you know keep people aware one of the things we discussed is how you know, if you start a garden yourself, however small it is, and you start talking about it, you're gonna inspire other people to start doing the same. So why not start talking about it from that standpoint? Right. I think that's a wonderful thing. And it's amazing that they're doing this here. This yeah. is just one section where they have plants for pollinators. I mean, we've walked around the whole place and they have, you know, zinnias and they have like a butterfly section, mm -hmm. um, cone flowers, all yeah. the flowers that are really great for the pollinators. That's really beautiful stuff. Um, and it is hard work because I, I I spent a lot of time in the garden taking out weeds. That has been probably the best way to keep the pollinators, you know, keep the bumblebees, keep the butterflies, the beetles. That has been the way that we've done it. Um, and it can be work, so you know, maybe starting small is the best way to do it mm -hmm. um, before you go ahead and like dive deep into it because you're gonna be pulling weeds quite a bit. But mulch, um, straw is really helpful with the weeds. That is a way that you can do it. On my herb garden, I have a uh, tarp, like a fabric, uh, just because I have so much of it and mint, mint tends to take over. And so you can utilize ways to kind of contain it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have my strawberries next to my herbs because my herbs also deter the insects that maybe you don't want around. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very helpful. So they're kind of surrounded by that. Um, and then on the other side, we use straw for all of our vegetables. Yeah. And that's, that's kept cool. the weeds. We have had to work a little bit, but we haven't had to spray anything. And so that's really helpful for the uh, pollinators. Yeah. It's very important. So yeah, the big things, um, appreciate what's around it's wonderful to take walks through gardens like this and just see and explore like we were doing you know feel the plants smell them see what works see what pollinators are around uh, education's big getting things like this book yes. um, looking online talking with people and then start spreading the word as you start experimenting um, every little bit counts um, and again
again, if you don't have the space for it, go and see if there are ways that you can volunteer, whether that's a community garden, whether that's a restoration project. There are a lot of different places out there that, that do a lot. And we can't stress enough the pollinators are threatened, so this is a really awesome opportunity for us to be able to bring that back to them mm -hmm. um, and back to ourselves. So you can join that movement and um, you can share with us by using the hashtag Pollinator Week. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and then you can read this book, Pollinator Garden friendly gardening and it just literally covers all of the bases um, any questions you might have they're going to be here some of the experts have talked about it and you can find it on our bookstore um, there's going to be a link in the comments for that mm -hmm. and be sure to share any questions or comments that you may have as as q said we'd love to hear how you're being a pollinator friend in your uh in where you live if you want to join the our facebook gardening group for the mother earth news uh, for mother earth news you can just search mother earth news gardening group and a lot of people are sharing their experiences some of these people have the most amazing gardens mm -hmm. so you can head on over there too and share with us about your pollinator garden yeah well we hope you've enjoyed just taking some time with us to celebrate summer and also take a look at some pollinator gardens we hope you've learned something and have a great day everyone and thank you for joining us thank you bye, bye.